All right, so for those of you familiar with Home Assistant and have smart blinds or smart bulbs, you probably ran into the following problem. How do I restore my device to a previous state? Here's a common example of this type of problem. Your lights automatically turn on at a specific brightness level, and then a separate automation activates, which changes the brightness and possibly the color of the lights to something new. But that new automation need to revert the lights back to the previous state the lights were at. So there are two popular ways to capture the state of an entity, but using the red, I'm gonna show you about four ways you can capture a state of an entity. Now, the first way is to use input text helper. Before starting an automation, you can store a value in an input and reference it later when you need to revert back to some previous state. Now, this method is pretty straightforward and works well if you need to track, let's say, a single value. I would recommend using this if the value is something that is already required for a helper. So, for instance, in my system, I have a helper to track the global volume level for all of the Google devices within the house. So, whenever the text to speech activates, references that global helper or that input helper to know what volume to play the speakers at. Volume should default to 20%. But that's a simplistic example. Let's say if you need to track more than one attribute, the standard is to use scenes. Scenes are extremely powerful. Scenes allow you to take a snapshot of one or more entities and revert back to that saved snapshot later on. So the way this works is that before the automation starts, you will take a snapshot of the entities and save it like this. And then later on, when you need to revert back, you simply just trigger the scene by the ID name that you gave it. So you can find out more about scenes and how they work in the Home Assistant documentation. In the example that I used before, scenes are probably the way to go in terms of getting everything to work pretty quick and reverting back and forth. Now, if you're using Node Red, you have two additional methods for saving entities. The first is called the Global Context. This is an in memory storage solution that Node Red offers, which is available to your automation. So this means that you can store any information in the global context and recall it later in a separate automation. This storage solution is extremely handy, so much so, so much so that I created a custom subflow around it, allowing me to access the global context easily within any of my automations. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out the description where you can find a link to Chaperone to get more information about how to use this custom subflow. Now, in context with the previous problem, right, if you use the global context, you can save simply the attributes that you care about and discard the rest, which makes it a little bit more flexible than let's say scenes. We'll come to think of it, I think scenes does allow you to save specific attributes, but neither here nor there, context allows you to do something very similar to scenes. But what if I told you that there was something that didn't require you to save the states at all, yet have the ability to have access to the previous state? So Home Assistant automatically keeps a history of actions taken on each entity. So if technically Home Assistant already knows the previous state, why not ask for it? So using the get history node, we can get all of the state changes on an entity between a given time rate. To fully explain the advantage that this node offers, uh, let me try to explain this with a problem that I was trying to solve. So I installed some strip lights on my house and I added them to a few of my security automations. Now the lights were supposed to turn on around sunset and then when the alarm is active, it would turn red if anyone was caught in my ring camera. Now the problem is that after a few minutes, the light should turn turn back to the previous state. So for instance, at night, right, since the lights were on before it turned red, it should then revert back to its original on state. But then during the day, since the lights are technically off, and if this automation triggers to red, then it should technically revert back to its off state. Now, normally scenes would work pretty well for this. However, because the motion detection is kind of uh, finicky, it means that the automation could trigger more than once. That happens, then this will technically overwrite the scene to think that the default state is the red light. Now there are ways around this. For instance, I could just lower the duration of the red light so that way the ring camera won't have the opportunity to confuse what is the normal state. Um, but I didn't want to do that. Ring's not going to tell me what to do. The other thing I could do is just hard code, let's say the previous states based off of the time of day, but that would needlessly complicate the automation even further. And I didn't want to do that. But this is where history gets to shine. The history is only updated if the state of the light changes. That means that if no values change, no matter how many times automation may trigger it, then the history of it stays the same and I can reliably find previous state. Okay, let me clarify. 
the get history node seems to only trigger a new event when the state changes. That means for lights, when they go from on to off, it will create a new history event. Now, if I change the color, brightness, or any other attribute, no changes will be registered. Now, you can see here that I have two events. One event is from when the light was off and the other was when I turned it on to blue. When I click the node that changes the color to white, it only registers two events, the same two from earlier. Keep this in mind when you choose this method. So I've noticed that a lot of these home assistant nodes, like the get history node or the call service node, like all of these are just abstraction for things that you can already do within home assistant. This means that there should be some kind of equivalent feature in using the native automation GUI within home assistant. Now, I don't know what that is for the get history node, but if any of you know how to pull this off and figure out how to do this within the native home assistant uh, infrastructure, write in the comments and let me know below. Hope you learned something new with that one later. Thank you.